I don't normally do this kind of, you know, content, the doom and gloom stuff, but it has been a really weird week. Ever since the loss that was last week against the 49ers, I, look, it is, it's only been one game. I've been saying that over and over. It's been one game. The Steelers can bounce back. I had a video talking about they can bounce back. But there are a few concerns going around my mind, and I just need to get off my chest. And I'm so thankful to have this, this channel and this community that I can do so. So if you guys enjoy the content, hit the like, hit the sub, do all those YouTube things if you like the content. If you don't, you know, in the next five seconds, five, four, three, two, one, you're gone. But those guys who stayed, let's talk about, about a few things that I want to, um, you know, raise as concerns. First of all, it, it is the, the, the pink elephant in the room or the elephant in the room that is Matt Canada. But I'm going to not only say Matt Canada, I'm going to say the overall offense because I don't think Kenny played that well last week. They they couldn't run the football. They ran nine times. Kenny threw the ball 46 times. Uh, of course, DJ went down offensively. Our O-line looked pretty bad, a lot of holes there. And yes, we were versing, the Steelers were versing a number one defense and Nick Bosa, and I took him lightly. I took Javon Hargrave lightly. Uh, is it Eric Armstead? I took him lightly too, okay? All those things happened, but it still comes down to your best man against my best man. And is Matt Canada, is he the best man for the job? That's that's the one thing, the one concern. And I will have three concerns and let me know, guys, what you think in the comments below. But my first concern is, is we have seen this over the last two years. And all last year, I kept saying, fire Matt Canada. He's awful. He's terrible. He's this, he's this, he's whatever, right? We've been saying this for a long time. And I understand that, that some people aren't happy with Mike Tomlin. I'm a Mike Tomlin guy. I like what he's done. I like what he's doing with the, with this with this team. And I still think they can turn things around, me trying to be as hopeful as I can with Mike Tomlin. But then going back to our offensive coordinator, I understand that Mike Tomlin, you know, I've heard it all. Mike Tomlin, he hired uh, the OC that is Canada. He, that he's keeping him here, so he's part of the problem too. And it does reflect down onto the coaching staff. And that's why we feel like, we are in this 0-1 you know, spot or hole, and can the Steelers get out of it? But there is a big concern for me because with Matt Canada and this offense, they only scored seven points last week. That's pretty bad. Uh, they end up running, I think, like one or two yards in, in their first offensive uh, first half. And then near the end of the half, I think it was, they scored seven points in a two-minute drill, and things looked a lot better. Now, Mike, uh, Mike Tomlin, sorry, not Mike Tomlin, Matt Canada came out and said it's only one game. We have to get better. Trying to say all the right things. At the same time, though, I feel like we've been hearing that for a very long time from his first year when he had Big Ben. Then he had last year, he had Trubisky, which didn't work out. And they went to Kenny Pickett into the fourth game with the Jets. And he kind of, you know, grew out of his rookie shell and played good football down the stretch. Then we had in the offseason, you know, the amount of moves that Omar Khan made. And I'm still... I'm still very hopeful for this team that we can be better going into week two, week three, week four, week five. But I do have that concern is what if they can't? What if the Steelers can't get out of this like this mini rut, this offensive, you know, stalemate? I listened to um, Alex Cazores from Steelers Depot. He called this offense boring. And it does feel that way. It does feel very boring. So my first concern is pretty much not just Matt Canada, MC. It's the coaching staff. It is the offense, and it is also the players inside the offense that it has to execute the plays, and we didn't see that. We didn't see that last week. We saw it all through preseason. Looked fantastic. Looked like we're on fire. Looked like we're going to go to the playoffs. Then we get a humble moment versing a 49ers defense, took us to town, and hopefully this wakes up the team. So that's my first concern is Matt Canada and also just the offense. Can the Steelers, when they verse the Browns and they verse the Raiders next few weeks, and then also the Texans, three games in a row, also versing the Ravens too, four games in a row, for the next, before the bye, can they wake up and move the football down the field? That is finding GP, that is finding Allen Robinson or working in Calvin Austin, getting the ball to Connor Haywood or Frymouth. All the things we talked about in the offseason didn't come true week one. So that's my first concern is overall, is Matt Canada and the offense. Now, my second concern is pretty much is Cameron Haywood missing? Uh, and also, can they stop the run? 
If you go back to the game last week when they versed the 49ers, I think they allowed like 150 yards to uh, McCaffrey. I'm going to the box score. McCaffrey had 152 yards, one TD, 65 longest. And the team overall had 34 touches, runs, 188 yards, and one TD, right? So Brock Purdy had 20 yards. Mitchell had 10. Debo Samuels, 8. Sam Darnold. Sam Darnold? Oh, he came in to, to kneel down. That's crazy. He came to kneel down. He had minus two yards. But that's my concern, right? Can the Steelers stop the Browns' attack in rushing the football? Now, D. Watson, he can still run out of the pocket and run away. Now, we saw last year that they, they sacked him seven times. Uh, we won 28-14. I want to kind of see that on Monday Night Football. Now, they're wearing their all-white, so I want to turn their all-white jersey with some you know green uh, grass, patches, mud, stuff like that. I want to see his jersey get a bit dirty, right? But I'm a bit concerned about the Steelers can't stop the run. They allowed over 180 yards last last week. Um, it got better last year, but still, the very first outing, we see 180 yards. Cameron Haywood's not there anymore. Who slots into that spot? Ogan joby has been like dealing with a foot injury for the last, I think, week or so. It feels like, you know, a few months into the preseason. And, and he, he always seems to, ha to have an injury. So could he be out? Um, does, Ke does Keanu Benton play? Does uh, we, we see guy like Armand Watts, does, does Mar De Marvin Leal step up? Who's going to help stop the run? And help me in the comments, please. We're all in this together. We're having a few beverages. Help me in the comments. Who's going to stop the run? If you can't stop Nick Chubb, then this Browns offense will then run down the field, play action pass, and if it's two, it's second and two, next minute, third and four, run again, fresh at of downs, the game's going to be in their control uh, and then, you know, pretty much take over the game and Nick Chubb can can win a game and the, and the Browns rushing game can also win them the game too. If we can't stop that, that's going to be difficult. Now, my last concern, uh, it's not it's not involving Matt Canada. It's not involving, um, it's not involving you know, uh, the run game. It's more about, it, it, it is, it, it's the hype versus the reality what we see. Will this team have enough heart, ticker, you know, energy? Um, will they be hyped up enough or will they be ready and game day ready to put on a show? We, we've seen this with, and I'll say, look, I'm a Mike Tomlin guy, but we have seen this in the past with Mike Tomlin-led teams that they're just not ready for sometimes the bigger matchups or sometimes they're not ready for like a weaker team like the Jets where we should you know, push them away. The Steelers haven't won a blowout game in what feels like 2018 or 2019. The last one I can remember might have been against the Panthers. We beat them like 52 to something. I'm not saying you have to blow these teams out, but I'm saying for the last two or three years, it has felt like, and, the, and it was weird too, the 11-0 stretch we had in 2020, it was, we just came down, came down to the wire and we won those games right at the wire. And the last two years or so, it does feel like as a Steelers fan, you sit in your chair, you have your beverage, you have your favorite food, and you're sitting there thinking, well, I just want to have an easier game to enjoy. And I know it's football, but we do seem to get like a lot of heart attack games where it comes down to the last minute, the last play, the last field goal attempt, or we're winning by 10 points and then they let the team come back in. So does this team overall, are they ready for the season? Because last week, they weren't ready for the season. They weren't. They were outplayed, outmatched, and you know taken apart by the 49ers. So my last concern is, is pretty much, is this team ready? You know, Are they ready to play with the big boys in the NFL? And they haven't been as physical as we saw them in the preseason or even last year when they had the, the momentum winning four games in a row and KP8 finding picket to pickens in the end zone to the Raiders. Uh, Kenny Pickett to Najee Harris in the Ravens game. And when they also beat the Browns and then the Jets lost because of the playoff, right? The Flacco stuffed up for us. But they haven't been that physical, at least last week. And I, I just question, or my concern is, are they ready? Because if they lose this game, if the Steelers lose this game, it's not the end of the world, but it sure would feel like it, if you put it that way. It's not the end of the world where, okay, they can't go on a run to win the playoffs. They can't go on a run to win eight, nine, ten in a row. They can. We've seen it before. Mike Tomlin-led teams have always had the Steelers in a chance to win. There's only like two games in history, I believe, um, in the Steelers 
in his reign as coach where they've played meaningless football, right? So I'm not saying that it's you have to give up or it's time to, you know, throw in the terrible towel. But I'm saying, is this team ready? Is this team really ready to compete with some of these guys in the NFL? Are they pumped up? Are they going to be physical enough? Are they going to be checked in mentally? Is Kenny ready? Is Darnell Washington ready? Are these guys ready as a team, as a unit, to go out there and play and win on Monday Night Football? Because if we lose this game and the Steelers go to 0-2, there is far more concerns than just the offense or the, the defense running game or, you know, uh, concerns about are they ready. It comes down to, well, is Kenny Pickett the guy? Then there's going to be more heat on Coach Tomlin, more heat on Canada, more heat on Terrell Austin, uh, possibly even heat on Omar Khan, which we all called him the Khan artist in the offseason. But there's going to be more heat there. If the Steelers lose this game, then things can start to – what do they call it? Like the house of cards can all rumble down and, and, and collapse. And that may happen. Now, I still believe that the Steelers can come back and bounce back into this game. But I wanted to get out some of my concerns for this game. And I know a lot of Steel Nation has their concerns too. Let me know, guys, in the comments below if you have any concerns about the overall game coming up. Do you think they're ready? That being concern number three. Are you worried about the run defense? Uh, which is concern number two, which I, I am. I'm a bit worried about the run defense. If you can't stop Nick Chubb, this this game is going to be, as I, my voice breaks, this game is going to be very, very difficult to watch. And also the Browns can win this game. And my last concern is this bloke. He's a Matt Canada-led offense. His third year. He has no real safety net. He's last year in contract. And also, not just Matt Canada, but the players who play in the offense, that being Kenny Pickett, the new formed O-line, and the players that we got like Alan Robinson and now DJ being out, we have to rely on and see what happens with, with CA3 uh, coming into the mix. And we need to see some, some big plays and catches and separation from George Pickens. We need to see some of these things happen. We saw in, in the preseason, also what we saw in the last few games last year. So those are my three concerns, guys. Let me know in the comments below what you think. I just had to get that off, man. I, I just... I felt uneasy ever since we lost that game versus the 49ers. Yes, they're a great team, but I've just felt uneasiness, you know, and I, can't, I and my, my last question is, is if the Steelers win this game, does that fix everything? Because I feel like even if they win this game, it doesn't fix everything unless they do like a perfect game. But there's a long way to go from not only this game into to the, the, the Raiders game, uh, the Texans, the Ravens. There's a long season to go. I just think as fans, we want to see some progression and the team get better every week. And can it be worse? Can it be worse than last week where they scored seven points and are pretty much out of the game from the get-go? All right, guys, you enjoy the rest of your day and I'll see you later. <laughs>